lot of these kids, it's the first time, right? And you know, making the jump to college and, and trying to become that elite player that you were in high school, and all of a sudden you, you face huge setbacks as far as injuries go. There's no question the mental side is much worse than the physical more often than not. And you know, he's our biggest cheerleader. It, it's you're cheering for him so so hard because. You know, in the meeting room, at the practice, on tape, you watch him in the walkthroughs, throwing his hat because somebody makes a mistake. Like he's as invested as anybody, and all you want for a kid like that is to come out the other side and get that taste of, of having success. So we're excited when we can get him back and, and, and get him rolling because it has been a much longer journey um, to get healthy than, than he would have liked. And, 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 Got enough to kind of catch up, or are they still going to be playing a little bit of catch up here uh, at the beginning of the fall ball? Uh, I think the biggest thing is is getting them an understanding of how we adjust things in season. You know, they did a great job in the spring. They're, they're veterans. They know football. Um, they did a great job in the classroom learning what we do. It's just the little tweaks that we do in season, um, making sure they're doing that. It's a talented group that came in. And, Motivated to to show who they were, uh, motivated to show the type of character they have and the work ethic they have. So they fit in with the group and excited. You know, I, I truly think, as a secondary, especially that corner group, this might be the deepest group we've ever had. Uh, when you add those guys with the, the guys we had on our roster last year, that you know we're going to have to take that next step. Um, it was really fun this spring to see them compete and, and how close they got. I'm expecting some great competition uh, from that group. And it's like they're going to push each other every single day. Jim, I normally ask your inside linebacker coach this question, but Mark hasn't had the chance to work with a guy like Tate Grass. How would you describe his journey from when he first got here? I know he closed the spring as a number one, and that's still up to be determined, but this is developed as a player, as a guy that appears you guys trust him. Yeah, it's. You hate to say kind of that classic walk-on story of just yeah. continuing to build year in and year out, finding a bigger role, and uh, you know, excited for what he did this spring and, and stepping forward. Now, being one of those leaders in that group, he yeah. was able to kind of sit in the back, and even though he was an older guy, like you had some some strong veterans with Leo and Jack in front of him. So now to see him kind of step out of his comfort zone and become more of a vocal leader, um, well, he's just trying to compete to, to win a job. Um, excited. What he did in high school, rushing the passer, you know, the transition to inside backer here in this program. Um, just always great to see those guys just continue to develop their game. Um, excited to see what he can do this spring. You know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the competition at inside backer because I think we have some extremely talented guys. Um, not the most experienced in the country, but I think we do have a lot of talent in that group. And I'm excited to see what, what Mark can do to, to pull that out of him. You know, walk-ons have been rewarded here, but it's still not a guarantee when you come here. It, it, has he ever wavered in his belief that if he kept working, he would be rewarded? Uh, not that we've seen. Okay. You know, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's there's rough days. There's yeah. there's days you don't quite see the light at the end of the tunnel, but um, all he's done is consistently showed up and worked okay. and, and been a great teammate, been a great leader, done whatever we asked him to do. So. The unselfishness and the work ethic stuck out every single day. There's, there are tough days. I, I was at walk-on, and sometimes you don't feel like you're getting the recognition. Maybe they're not seeing me mm -hmm. the way that I think I should be. Mm -hmm. But uh, you said the selfness, selflessness to just come in and work and, and continue to get better has it's been there all the time. Jim, do you still get excited for tomorrow? I mean, is it like when you were a player, just couldn't wait to get down here and, and get to work? I always get excited, you know, as a coordinator, it's just fun to see what you can work with, right? You, you kind of have these thoughts on how things are going to come together and, and what the depth is going to be, um, how you can utilize specific players. But until you hit the field in fall camp, you never quite know. And uh, so you do get excited. It's a little different than being a player. The, the nerves, the jitters aren't quite the same, but the excitement is still there. You, you just you realize how close that first game is. Feel like you're kind of backs against the wall once you hit training camp because you're you always feel like you're behind. And, uh, it's an exciting time and players feel it, the coaches feel it, and you know game day's coming right around the corner. And Nick Herbig, what kind of leader has he become on this team for you guys? 
from day one, his passion for the game, his excitement to play football has showed, and, and our guys have felt that. And now you're just seeing how much more vocal he is, and, you know, crossing the ball, right? Going to offense, um, different position groups. You see how comfortable he is in his leadership and, and being vocal and communicating with guys. Uh, it's always fun to see a guy take that next step. You know, not really just stick within their position group or their friend group, um, just pulling as many guys along as possible. It's really exciting when you see leaders kind of develop that way. Thank you. Appreciate you. I apologize if you got asked this already, but... Uh, Twice. <laughs> Titus's journey back to the team. Can you kind of talk about what that process was and what it means for him to be available for fall camp? Yeah, uh, very tough for, for a guy to go through adversity kind of the mental side, the physical side, having injuries. Um, so <laughs> when you see a guy just so excited to be back, um, so excited to just try to find a way to contribute, uh, really excited for him, you know, the maturity that he's gained, you know, just kind of where he's at from a mental standpoint right now as, as compared to a year, year and a half ago. Um, just excited, that's what it's about, you know. He, he's gonna come back, I think he's gonna have a, a great career for us. And, just a totally different perspective than, than he did coming in the door. Do you have to do anything differently with, with him coming back the way he is coming back in terms of how you're bringing him in, how you're installing things with him, or is it just like everyone else? I mean, it's anytime you got guys coming back from long times off, um, usually injuries and things like that, you, know, you want to be smart just to make sure they're continually doing it, right? You're not having this huge step back. Um, injuries happen, he's going to get sore. I think of a guy, Preston Zachman, the same thing. Coming back from injuries, uh, you always want to be smart. Um, that's where communication and trust are a big factor of it. You know, we have to go back and forth. Um, and you, you constantly want to be building. You don't want to have those big jumps and, and valley peaks and valleys. So, but I'm really excited for a number of guys who've been through some adversity over the last year, year and a half, to kind of hit the field and. and and it's always exciting that that brings so much more juice to your entire team when you get guys who've gone through adversity that, that are back and um, just showing that energy on the field day in and day out. Jim, Katie Iacomelli, these guys in your group uh, here in the fall, all spring was kind of didn't know quite what position he was going to be at. What do you like about him at safety and what do you think he can bring once he develops kind of learns your system? Uh, I think physically very mature, uh, explosive athlete, Obviously, you go back to his recruitment and, and coming to camp and just kind of wowed everyone with his with his athletic ability and his physicality, his size, his, his strength, um, speed. So knew he was flexible with what position he could play. He was more running back than safety in high school, but he had done enough to see the traits. Um, I love guys that go offense and defense, right? They, they see the game a little bit differently. And, He's a smart football player. He, he gets the game. Um, put in the time this offseason. I will say this young group, um, obviously I'm more aware of what's happening on defense and offense, but they're students of the game and, and they're hungry to compete. And a lot of them, I think, from a physical standpoint, um, are, are ready to compete. So it's going to be a lot of fun working with Cade and just continuing to grow his knowledge of the game. And, Hopefully flash some, some athletic ability and some playmaking skills here over the camp.